For more than 75 years, PepsiCo's powerful Frito-Lay North American division has modeled the best of American business practices. And today, Frito-Lay brands account for almost 60% of the U.S. snack chip market and significant shares of the European and Asian markets. But 2008 threatened to change that track record of success. In that year, the company unexpectedly found itself on the verge of disappointing its suppliers, its shareholders, and its customers. Indeed, everything that could have gone wrong that year went wrong. But instead of suffering a financial disaster, Frito-Lay exceeded expectations and produced one of its best years ever. Here's the story. Last year was a, a very interesting year for a lot of reasons. It started off with just all the, you know, the volatility and commodity pricing. It's no secret that uh, at the end of uh, 2007, we went into an economic recession. And what we saw was rapid inflation that was totally unpredicted. The worst economy in 30 years, 40 years, I mean, pick a number. The cost to the farmers was just skyrocketing. The raw material inflation was 10 times what we normally have. On January 15th, my CFO presented me with the new information. I said, what are you talking about? When we came out of January of 2008, we discovered that we had a significant increase in costs that we didn't anticipate. And so we had to move very quickly to reduce our costs to cover that inflation. Potatoes are a thing that you really have got to be about six or seven months ahead of, right? Because it takes about 120 days for them to grow. And the growers really need about 120 days on the front end of that to get them planted and get the ground fertilized. Right after Memorial Day, we just had a tremendously terrible pattern of weather. I mean, literally you could have turned the potato fields into catfish farms. It got worse from there. It just kept getting worse. At the same time, we had a beautiful crop in North Carolina, but for the last uh, six weeks of the crop, they got no rain. This problem was so big that, you know, I couldn't figure it out. We couldn't figure it out. There just weren't any potatoes. And, and what that did was require us to make very quick decisions to change our business model. We had to make a change in our cost structures. We had to make a change in our pricing, in our market pricing, and we had to move very, very quickly. The old way I would have perceived the organization would have worked it in terms of really hunkering down and who's going to solve the issue. Or Al would have said, well, Leslie, you need another $100 million of productivity. Just go cut everything you can. And it, it would not have worked. Six months earlier, Frito-Lay and its suppliers had implemented the speed of trust management process. When the extraordinary challenges of 2008 hit, they were prepared with a new perspective and a new skill set. It was a very difficult year, and yet we navigated through that and we made our, our objectives on both profits and sales for the year, and we did it in the right way because we did it working with our retailers, because we had the ability inside the company to make decisions faster. And that's what Speed of Trust allows you to do. It allows you to move quicker to make the decisions you have to make to address the business issues. It allowed us to communicate with customers quickly so that in fact we could implement the programs we had to implement in time. And that's what saved our year. What it's given us is a common language to go back and frankly address some of those challenge issues. And I would say we've gotten more out of the speed of trust in helping us deal with challenges, giving tough feedback if you will, or trying to question things than almost any other part of the overall speed of trust journey. Because when things are good, it's easy to trust. Um, when you've got challenges, that's when it becomes, it really puts it to the test. It made it very fluid for people to see, wow, I think there's a new way to act here because it's modeled by the leaders. They're now bringing these tools to me and more importantly, they're providing a business framework in which I have to work very collaboratively with my partner. So in summary for me, I think we've moved it from cooperation to collaboration and I think the enabler was speed of trust. What would normally take us two months of wrangling with each other to determine exactly how we were going to cut a significant amount of cost out of our system, we did in 10 days. This new decision-making speed also helped when Frito-Lay realized it had to revise its marketplace pricing. Normally it takes us 16 weeks to do marketplace pricing. 
Because of the sense of urgency and because we had speed of trust training, because we had the ability to trust each other to make decisions, we did it in five weeks. And in five weeks, from the time we knew we had to make the decision, we had implemented it in the marketplace. Unheard of in our business. We have never done it in faster than 16 weeks. So it was a huge implication on our business, on our financial model, and our ability to really navigate through 2008, which was a very difficult year. Uh, because of inf high inflation and then because of the economy starting to tank. We could have had a year, we could have declined profits in the negative 2 or 3 percent range. It could have easily happened. We ended up in the plus 7 or 8 percent range. When you start to trust your management team, then you empower them to make decisions. And that's part of what speed of trust really allows you to do. And that's how you pick up the speed. They don't have to keep coming back and checking what do you think about this direction or what do you think about that direction? They come back with a, with a recommendation and with an answer. I, I credit the speed of trust because we move through decisions that are normally enormously complex. We did them in breakneck speed and we made five sets of tough decisions throughout the whole year. And we never would have been able to make those decisions as quickly as we, we did last year. So when you trust each other, there's no need for all the extra bureaucracy. It can allow you to reduce layers of management. It can allow you to move directly to decisions quicker. Now, this has been going on for two years, right about at two years. My team is a different team. And if you ask the people in PepsiCo when they come down here to visit Frito-Lay, they'll say something's changed down there. It's, just, it's the speed of trust. One of the, the most unique aspects of Speed of Trust is we started with actually changing the culture. When you really get into it, having these, these dialogues and these conversations are very difficult, um, you know, in terms of that, that it takes to develop that trust and really addressing those issues that don't create trust um, head on as opposed to just kind of putting them in a, you know, say, well, I'm not even going to talk to you about that or, you know, kind of backdooring different types of things. To me, starting with the culture was what made this program, and again, it's, it's more than a program. I mean, I think it's become part, it is our culture. We've been on a tremendous journey that I think is having an impact in, in the lives of people. It's because it's been such a great enabler of doing what we wanted to do in, in a bold transformational vision, but also in a vision that's the right thing for human sustainability and for, you know, our talent sustainability for our environment. It's, it's just fit so well. And we're tapping into a team you know, spirit and also, again, very, um, very straight talking behavior with each other that we just hadn't tapped into before. Historically, we haven't had high turnover, but if you look at some of the departments, um, that's a, it's a little different story. And our overall turnover rate is somewhere around 7%. At one point early on in this journey, marketing was around 40%. The turnover in marketing today is right around 4%. Speed of Trust has become really the mantra of how we're managing the culture of our company. It's a huge change to our company. What Speed of Trust did for us was allow us to operate more efficiently as a company. We got decisions made faster, we were able to move quicker when we had to, and it was all based upon the fact that we now had Speed of Trust training in the organization and we had Speed of Trust with each other. We started at the top with my leadership team. It's a place to make people more comfortable at confronting the effectiveness of the organization and having this common language and these common sets of tools to be able to advance the organization in, in terms of effectiveness. Having come up through the sales ranks, I've been through every training program you could imagine, uh, there are none better. It's the best training program I've seen that, it's not a training program, it's not, in fact, it's a process of managing. It is the only program I've seen that spans all the functions. So this can be used in each of the functions, whether it be our engineers or our marketing people, our sales or our finance people. And I haven't seen any programs that really work you know, well across all functions. When we start presenting the speed of trust, there are no resistors, none. I mean, I have, and it's not because I told them you're going to do the speed of trust. They, they buy into it. I think it's a natural way to run an organization. We have more than just awareness being built in this company. We have deep skill sets being developed around speed of trust. Hopefully this will just be part of Frito-Lay in the future, but it's the most exciting change in the culture that I've seen in the 28 years I've been at, at uh, PepsiCo and most of those years at Frito-Lay. But speed of trust will survive here at Frito-Lay because we've learned through the crisis that we can operate the business more effectively and more efficiently with speed of trust. So we will rely on it more 
in the future. We're taking that training down to everybody in the company. And what we're learning is that now that we've done it at Frito-Lay, we can take it to PepsiCo, we can take it to our suppliers, and we can take it to our customers. And we're now using speed of trust training with our third party providers, both on our supplier base as well as our customer base. We try to find ways with our vendors and, and uh, maybe other departments to look at things a little more trusting and, and it really cuts the bureaucracy, cuts the amount of time that things take to get done on a, specifically on projects. I mean we used to, 10 years ago, I mean we used to spend time fighting with R&D over what was in the scope, what wasn't in the scope and now it's much more collaborative and man they get done a lot faster. Since we've done this training we're much more open and candid in our conversation and just as we've gotten to know each other and use that training and even use some of the terminology I just I just feel like there's a higher level of respect and credibility. But Frito-Lay we're so driven to win and we're so results oriented you know to be here 25 years you gotta be fairly good at getting the job done but what Speed of Trust training did for me personally, it really got me refocused on how I was getting things done. And that was the, the greatest learning for me, just to remember how I do things as important as what I do. We own the process from seed to shelf, so we work with our farmers, we grow the seeds, it never leaves our touch until we put it, uh, the product on the shelf. Speed of Trust worked for Frito-Lay and its suppliers. But did it also work for the stores that sold Frito-Lay products? So we went and told them, hey listen, we want to grow at 10 points. And we're going to base this on trust. And the trust is, your team and our team have the same common goal and we're going to figure out how to crack this code. So in interestingly, we actually rolled Speed of Trust within and they were so excited when they talked about it, they actually rolled it within their teams. We would not have had the successful year last year if we hadn't been able to move uh, quickly with both our cost reductions and our pricing adjustments in the marketplace. If we would operate under the old old system and moved at the pace of the old system, we would have we would have uh, reduced our profits by millions of dollars. I mean, we ended up having a great year. Our sale, I could, you know, I'm proud of the number that we uh, beat our number on profit for PepsiCo, which was tough. It was the best profit growth number we've had in the last 10 years. We had the fastest sales growth of any food company in America. So when you, if you go into Kroger or Walmart or Safeway and you said, who's your number one supplier last year in growth? We were, plus 11 percent. Last year we had an extraordinary year in the face of adversity. And I could say that it could be some of our products, it could be some of our people, it maybe had something to do with our productivity. But at the end of the day, the single biggest uh, contributor to our great year last year, and this year's fast start, has been the speed of trust. Mm -hmm.